All right, so the second devolution conference is underway, scheduled to end sometime later this afternoon. Aaron Oche and Sophia Wanuna have been following this conference, and he joins me now live. Aaron, thanks for joining us. But even as we're talking about two years of devolution, there are some developments in Mandera County. We understand of an attack then. You've been able to speak to the senator of Mandera. Um, Aaron, what are his thoughts on that attack? Yeah, even uh, the second revolution conference that is ongoing in Kisumu comes to an end today. But uh, we are reliably informed that the deputy president that was expected to close this session will not be making his way here. But uh, important issues that were discussed today, one of it was the security situation in Mandera County. Uh, today morning, we are reliably informed that there was an attack by suspected Al-Shabaab members. Uh, they attacked and uh, they actually kidnapped a chief in uh, Garissa County and uh, members from Mandera County led by their senator, Bill O'Carroll, had a press conference this morning and uh, this is what uh, they had to say this morning. The same spot in the last few months there has been several attacks um, on the same road between Lafay and uh, Mandera County, Mandera headquarters. And um, we want to first take the opportunity to condemn uh, strongly that attack uh, and the kidnapping of a chief. Um, uh, this chief and the chief, uh, you know, in that in those villages across uh, on the border, have always been under threat. And they have explained this many times to the government, that their lives are under threat because these people are always coming to those villages and have always threatened to go for chiefs and KPR members uh, who are residing in those areas. So first we want to take the opportunity to condemn uh, very strongly the action uh, by these terrorists of kidnapping uh, the chief and, 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 of, and, and of targeting other uh, innocent uh, travelers on that road. Uh, second, we want to also express our concern really that the government uh, has failed to secure that road. That for the second year running, transportation uh, of public service vehicles and even private ones uh, on that road has been um, severely affected by attacks uh, from the members of uh, the uh, Shabab. And I think this is a matter that we, I think the government is handling with a lot of laxity. Because this is an area not more than 50 kilometers from Mandara. We have the KDF who are supposed to patrol that road. And we have said time and again, we can't understand why KDF is unable to provide security uh, on the road by terrorists who are crossing from the border. Because that road runs parallel. Uh, it runs parallel to the border. Uh, it's less than five, six kilometers or seven at most uh, from the border. So we, we, we are really very uh, concerned um, that despite many uh, attacks in that area, consistent almost every other week, um, there is little action that is being taken to, one, um, get the KDF across the border to pursue these this terrorists across the border and get them out of that area bordering um, our country. And second, also failure by the uh, KDF to patrol adequately that road to ensure that these attacks are not you know, uh, happening uh, every week. Well, uh, a very pertinent issue is being raised here by Mandera leaders, and I'm joined uh, here by a Senator from Mandera County, Bill O'Carroll, uh, just to shed a little bit of light on uh, exactly what happened in Garissa, and in Mandera, I beg your pardon. Uh, Senator, when did this happen? It happened this morning. Um, uh, we got the report around 8 a.m. Um, and these vehicles uh, were leaving, uh, were, were heading towards Mandera uh, and have just passed uh, Arabia. So um, I think the chief and his assistant must have boarded from, uh, from Arabia. So it happened this morning in, in, in broad daylight. Okay. And you, you mentioned in uh, the earlier press conference that this is the same spot that uh, the governor was attacked uh, a few days ago. Could it be something more than we, we, we know? No, it's, you know, this road, the road from Mandera to Arabia to Lafay, runs parallel to the border, Somalia. Yeah. Uh, its maximum distance is five, six kilometers from the border. Yeah. Um, and, and, and on the other side of the border, these are the regions uh, that are controlled by Al-Shabaab. 
So invariably what happens is they always cross into the border, attack vehicles, sometimes attack vehicles, uh, and run back across the border. And, and, and we have always um, raised this as a major issue, that why is the government, uh, the KDF, not in that ghetto region of Somalia, which is the most critical because that is the area uh, bordering Somalia. Yeah, I mean, uh, rather than Kismayu, we want our forces to be on the border so that they actually have that buffer zone of 1,500 kilometers inside along the border. So that's where, the, that's what is, there's nothing else. It's just that it's on the border and so it's susceptible to attack, yeah. uh, you know, uh, always. Could, could be the uh, construction of the wall that uh, has been uh, suggested by the government. Could it be a solution uh, also raising the issue of uh, border control? Not really. I, I mean, the border, uh, the construction of the border wall would make sense if it is uh, in the town. For example, separating Bulahawa and Mandara. Um, but I think having a wall running in the middle of um, uh, you know, the 700 kilometers of the, of the border to Somalia, between Somalia and Kenya may not make a lot of sense. Mm. But I think what, what makes sense is that the KDF must take control of the other side of the border. If not, they must provide uh, camps, KDF camps, along the border, say 20, 30, 40, 50 kilometers, every, every 30, 40 kilometers, so for, for ease of deployment. Mm. For example, last week they took a vehicle on the same road. Um, a month ago is when they attacked the vehicle, the convoy of the car. So what happens is the story is always the same, that the government is on hot pursuit. Mm. So once they cross the border, then I, I think because of some international law, whatever other uh, obligations, yeah. we find and that... It, it, it brings uh, to, to the fall the, the issues that we've been discussing here in uh, this conference, devolving security. Do you think now if, if government really devolves security, counties can be able to manage security of their own? I think the most fundamental aspect of devolving security that we have always repeated is to engage the leadership of the counties or involve the leadership of the counties in security matters so that at least in terms of collaboration, in terms of working together with the county security committee, the governor or other you know, people from the county government should participate so that they can share information, they can share uh, ideas, they can work together as a team. Uh, what happens in most counties, including Mandara, the county government provides them with a lot of support, logistics in terms of fuel, in terms of vehicles, mm. and so forth. But then you find that in terms of um, uh, sharing information, it's one way. We provide information to the national government security mm. team, but it doesn't, you don't get a feedback. You don't, you don't get to know what's happening. You don't get to know their response, their reaction, what actions have been taken when someone is arrested or when uh, information is released. So I think that lack of of cooperation is one of the things that needs to be addressed. Okay, uh, the conference comes to an end in just a few hours uh, from now. The deputy president was expected to close the ceremony, but he's not come. But uh, in terms of achievements or the, the issues that were to be discussed in this conference, what would you say is uh, has been achieved? Well, I, I think the fundamental issues which touch on devolution. Uh, issues like security, issues like fi accountability, um, uh, issues like agriculture uh, and, and finances have all been, have been discussed. Um, but what I would have really, um, I think going forward, uh, what we need to take home is that uh, in, in future conferences we need not to be speaking to ourselves only because you'll find that 90% uh, uh, of the participants are the county government uh, team, uh, be they executives or MCAs. Uh, and the governors uh, and a few senators. I think there is need to get other participants. Um, for example, National Assembly plays a key role in resource allocation and many others in legislation and so forth, which affect county governments. And they were not. And they were not. They are yeah. not. They are not here. Um, national government, uh, as we speak now, there isn't any member, either CS or a PS or anyone really from national government that is there uh, at that level really. And these are where you are discussing policy issues. Um, so I think it's it's important not. Just to speak to uh, ourselves, I think it's important that um, the organizers invite other uh, stakeholders and other members of the public to get a feel on what do others think about devolution and how they are managing the counties, how the counties are running and so forth. So I think there's probably need to address that going forward. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Bilo Kero, for finding your time to us. Yeah, the conference comes to an end in just a few hours from now. And as I mentioned earlier, the deputy president was expected to close this ceremony. Uh, but he, I understand that uh, he is uh, not in the country. But uh, uh, as Bilo Kero said, much of the 
uh, topics that uh, were to be discussed have already been uh, discussed and uh, uh, quite an achievement that has been made uh, in this uh, devolution, the second devolution conference.